Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to all of you. It is my great pleasure tonight to be able to address the residents of McPherson. Ladies and gentlemen, the NSP has been active in McPherson for a very long time. As you know, in the last election, McPherson was part of Marine Parade GRC. And the NSP stood in Marine Parade GRC and did very well. And we did very well in McPherson then, four years ago. In fact, the NSP has been active in McPherson for over 10 years. We have been walking the ground. We know the residents very well here. We understand your problems. And I would ask you, I would urge you on the 11th of September to vote for Mr. Chiu Chai Chen and send him into parliament to be your MP. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I want to address you on what I consider to be the central issue in this election. Many Singaporeans are talking about issues that concern themselves. They are talking about the CPF personal life savings. They are talking about how foreigners are taking away Singaporean jobs. They are talking about the overpopulation of this country. And they are talking about the ever increasing rising cost of living. But if we just step back, ladies and gentlemen, what is the one complaint people have arising for, from these four very often discussed topics? And it is this, that our government under the PAP has failed in the most solemn duty of any government, which is to look after its own people. You know, when you are a citizen of a country, and in Singapore, when the man have to do national service, spend two years of their lives. And for, the, and for people like me, who am 50 this year, in my days, I did two and a half years of national service. I think you expect your government to look after you. I think you expect your government to look after your interest and not always be driven by a profit motive. But that is what the PAP has become as a government. Today, that Singaporean cannot expect his government to look after him. Over a foreigner. The government allows large numbers of foreigners in because it says our economy needs these people. But what is the consequence? The consequence is that many Singapore men, Singaporeans, are losing their jobs to these foreigners. You know, the other day when we did a walkabout in Tampines, where I'm contesting as a candidate, a mother came up to us and told us how her son, who had graduated with first class honors from university, had not been able to find a full-time job for two years. 
and that all the positions he had applied to were eventually filled by foreigners. Do you think that if you go to a first world country, say America, or any country in Europe, or Japan, you will find a similar situation. Will you find the governments in those first world countries allow a foreigner to have priority over their own citizen for a job? The answer is obvious, no. The government comes up with a lot of statements, a lot of reasons, a lot of justifications as to how best they are doing for Singaporeans. They will tell you various things like, oh yes, we have moderated or we have slowed the growth of jobs for foreigners. So last year they claim it slowed from 45,000 to 13,000 jobs. But they don't reveal one vital statistic. Over the years, how many Singaporeans have lost jobs to foreigners? We should be entitled to know in any given year how many Singaporeans lose jobs to foreigners. But the government will never talk about this issue. And so what is the consequence of it today? Today, sadly, many of our very highly educated middle-class professionals have lost their jobs to foreigners. And they cannot be, they cannot find employment elsewhere. So they end up having to drive taxis for a living. And if you take our taxis, you will realize how educated the Singapore taxi driver is. You talk to them about various subjects and you realize you cannot even really hold a conversation with them because they know so much. And isn't this such a waste? Because for decades, our government told us that the only natural resource this country had was its people. And that government would see to it that we were educated to the highest level. But today, these highly educated people are not employed as they should be. I think it is a dreadful legacy that we are leaving to our next generation. When we have to tell our children, look here, your father lost his job to a foreigner. Does that instill in our new generation a pride to be Singaporean? And no wonder, every year, so many of our young and bright leave our country to settle abroad. And then we think that there's a brain drain. And what is the solution? We bring in more foreigners. And so the cycle perpetuates itself. You know, the government is very fond of criticizing the opposition and saying all the opposition knows how to do is to criticize and never have any solution. But the solution here, ladies and gentlemen, is so simple, isn't it? The solution here is to make sure that in every sector of our economy where jobs are concerned, that Singaporean has priority over the foreigner. What is so difficult about that? 
we are not saying we are not being xenophobic we are not saying no there must be an absolute bar to foreigners coming in to work in our country we are not saying that but i think it is wrong when there are no safeguards for that singapore man or woman in a job and you allow that foreigner to come in who's willing to take his job for a lower pay and then that Singaporean is displaced. I think that is wrong. You know, when I did a live forum almost a week ago now, on nomination day, and the topic of um, the loss of Singapore jobs to foreigners came up, I asked the PAP representatives one question. I asked them, what safeguards have you got in place for the Singaporean on his job? They couldn't answer. They started going into all the different schemes, this fair, that fair that they had for Singaporeans to retrain and all that. It's mind boggling, I'm telling you when you have to go through all the schemes this fair that fair when I know that the only thing Singaporeans are concerned about is that their bus fares are going up all the time I am told that my time is up I would like to address you further on this issue and on the other related issues like the CPF but I'm afraid I can't do so tonight and I shall leave that to another occasion on that note, I end my speech. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.